Let's add a full armor effect to our Minecraft mod. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, for back to was more in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom full armor effect to our Minecraft mod. That means that if I have my full suit of pink garnet armor on, then I'm going to get one or even multiple effects added to my character. For this, I'll actually be copying over the singular item class that we're going to need. Now, this is, as always, of course, available to you down below. So what I highly recommend you do is you basically copy it over as well. If the name of your armor material is different, then you change it in there. And I will go through and explain what everything there does, right? Of course, because otherwise that wouldn't make a lot of sense. You know, a three second tutorial just saying, hey, just copy it over and be done with it. No, of course not. This is the mod armor item and it goes in our item custom package. And there we go. So we'll basically take a look. This sometimes happens, right? Because sometimes it basically looks for the mod armor materials class in a different location and we can simply re-import it. And if you have red over here, you can press Control, Alt and O and it's going to remove all of the wrong imports at the top. So with this, we now have the class that should have hopefully no errors present and we can then take a look at this. This map right here basically maps a, an armor material to a list of status effect instances saying, hey, if you have this particular armor material on, then these are the effects that you're going to get. And what's really cool about this is that you can, first of all, have multiple different effects over here. So in theory, if I were to, you know, break this out a little bit, we can add more over here because this is simply a normal list, right? So we can just add as many as we would want in this case, and it's going to just work perfectly fine. We can also only add one, right? Because a list of one is still a normal list, so that's going to be fine. And in this case, I'm going to keep two, the haste and the jump boost. We can even change the amplifier. So this would make it with an amplifier of one. It would give you haste two. This would give you haste three and so on and so forth. The duration is in ticks. So you have to divide this by 20 to get the number of seconds out. If you have multiple armor materials, this also, by the way, only works with your custom materials. So sadly, not it, it's not going to work with materials from vanilla. That's just one limitation here. But if you have multiple that you want, you simply call the put over here again, because this is simply a immutable map builder. And before the build over here, we can add multiple puts and you can see if I had another material, I could just change it to that, you know, to that other material in theory, right? That's just a, for the sake of argument. But if I had like an underscore two right here and I can change the status effects that would be added if I had a full suit of armor for that specific material. So that is the whole idea here in the very beginning when it comes to the map. The mod armor item is not that interesting, but what is extremely interesting is our inventory tick. So the inventory tick method gets called every tick that you have a an item, an item stack of this specific type in your inventory, right? And we're first of all going to say, hey, are we on the server? We're going to say, hey, is the inventory that we're in even of a player? And then we're going to ask, has the player a full suit of armor on, right? Because otherwise we don't even need to do anything because obviously you need the full set of armor on. And that this method, obviously these methods are most of them here are custom methods, right? And let's take a look at what this does. We're simply getting all of the different armor stacks from the player's inventory. And we're saying, hey, are all of them not empty, right? That's basically the question we're asking. So are all of them filled? We don't care what they're filled with, right? So in theory, in the helmet slot, you could have a pumpkin, let's say, and that would be filled, right? So then it is not empty anymore. But for the time being, that is the only thing we're asking. And when we're asking this, then I want to evaluate the armor effects. So we're then moving on to this method over here, which just looks a little bit crazier, but it's going to be fine. Basically, we're looping through the entire map over here and getting out of this, the map armor material itself, and then the list of all effects that we have to basically apply when that specific armor material is done, right? And here we're then asking, hey, does the player have the correct armor on specific for this material? Because of course, right, we first of all have to ask, well, wait a second, uh, is the, the, do the materials match, right? If Because if they don't match, okay, then it's great that the full suit of armor is on, but they all have to be of the same type. And the first thing here that we're actually asking, which is even crazier, is that we're getting all of the armor via a, a list right here or a collection, right? So a list of armor um, of item stacks giving us all of the armor. And we're saying, hey, if any of them are not an armor item, we're immediately returning false and saying, hey, we do not have the correct armor on. This is so to, well, basically not have the game crash when you do exactly the thing that I said before with the helmet. Because if I had, you know, the breastplate and the leggings and the boots on, and then I have like a different helmet or I'm wearing a elytra, those are not armor item classes. 
meaning that if I were to cast them to an armor item right here, that would get us a crash, which of course is not something we want. So we're making sure that that is not the case. And then we're saying, okay, now get me all of those items. And now we can actually say, get, get the material and we're basically taking the material of the helmet and comparing it to the material that we're passing in right here. Now, because this is a for loop, we're basically going through each and every entry over here. So we're, in this case, we only have one, but if we had like three different armor materials, then it would go through and basically check this for each of them. And it's then going to say, hey, all right, we get now your armor material that you have on over here. That is, you know, whatever it might be, pink garnet, right? And we're going to see, hey, is the helmet pink garnet? Is the breastplate pink garnet? Is the leggings pink garnet? Is the boots pink garnet? All of them are pink garnet. Absolutely freaking fantastic. We can move on to add the status effect for that specific material. And that is the last step right here. And we can see we're basically asking, hey, does the player already have a status effect of any of the things that we have in our list? So we're basically saying, hey, get me the list of all of our status effects. Then we're saying, hey, do, do all of those match? And that what I basically want to say is that for each instance that I have, does the player already have that specific effect? If any of them are not added to the player, then we can actually proceed down here. You can see that, that because then this is immediately gets false. I'm once again checking for the correct armor over here. This is really not strictly necessary because this is already done. So in theory, you could also remove this and just say, hey, does do they have the effect already, right? If the player doesn't have any of the effects or let's, let's uh, reformulate this. If there's any effect missing from the player, that's how you can uh, formulate this, of our list over here, then what we're going to do is we're then going to add all of the effects. You can see we're basically going through the map right here. This is going to be the map for all of our status effects, right? This is basically the list over here, and we're adding this with a new status effect instance. The reason why we're making a new status effect instance is if I used this one, it would use this up and it could never be used again. That is why we basically are doing this. I believe there is actually a constructor where you literally just put in the other effect right here. Yeah, the, just the instance. That would also work, I guess. Uh, would make it a little bit easier. But I think this illustrates it as well, because you can basically see each individual thing that we have to pass in here, right? First, we have to get the effect type, then the duration, then the amplifier, then whether or not it's ambient, and then if it should show particles or not. I have turned both ambient and the particles off for both of them, because particles can sometimes be a little bit annoying when you have, you know, like an armor on and then you get, get, keep getting the, the particles. I think that that is a little bit silly, so that's why I turned it off. And to use this mod armor item class, it is extremely straightforward. You simply want to go to your mod items class right here and one of the items you want to change. Now, in our case, I think that the that the pink helmet, right, the, the helmet makes a lot of sense. I do think that both the chest plate and the boots also make sense. The leggings, for some reason, it doesn't make any sense to me to change the leggings. I don't know. It's just like a sort of an intuitive feeling I, I have, uh, but it doesn't matter. Obviously, you can change any of them. You could, in theory, also change all of them, but it is just wasteful. It is not necessary. It doesn't matter in the long run, though. Like, it doesn't matter that much, but basically changing one of them is going to be fine. Now, with this done and the class explained and hopefully somewhat understood, right, you can, of course, go ahead and change this up. I highly recommend you make it so that it all works and then you can change it up for any number of mod armor materials that you might want. But with this done, let's just jump in the game and see if it works. All right, fans, we're back in Minecraft and let's just see if I put on all of the different armor pieces. You can see now I have nothing. I have no effects going on, but as soon as I put on everything, then all of a sudden, cool bam, there it is. Ace three and jump boost two. And we can even see that that is the case because I can jump crazily and that is absolutely freaking fantastic. And of course, if I remove any one of those pieces from my armor, like armor items right here, right? The, the slots over here, as soon as those are done, they're not going to renew, right? But they are, of course, going to renew when I put it on again. So that's the whole idea. Of course, you can also reduce the, the length of this if you so choose to. Uh, it could be very annoying if you had something like night vision, right? Then because uh, after or if it's only 10 seconds remaining, then it's going to start flashing. So it's a little bit annoying. But yeah, there you go. That is a custom full armor effect added to Minecraft. Freaking awesome, man. I mean, I already mentioned this, but it's quite important, right? The code over here, the, the custom armor item is, of course, available down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial over here. Next time in this video, oh, that's when we're going to take a look at horse armor. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.